Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now if you follow me on Instagram then you'll have already seen plenty of photos of this or if you've seen my video from last Friday on my goals for 2019 then you've also seen this shirt. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this Diamante hot pink bralette. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this hot pink diamante bandeau. It simply ties up at the back and is literally one of the easiest things I have ever done. It did take a little bit of time, I'm not going to lie, it took me maybe two hours in total. But for a project, that's pretty damn good anyway. And like that whole time was literally just like flipping over all the little diamantes so that I could iron them on flat. So, if you want to know how I made this, then just keep on watching the video. So what you're going to need for this project is some fabric and some little iron-on diamantes. Now these ones I will link down below, I just got them off of eBay and they were actually pretty cheap. And then this fabric I've just had for a long time sitting in a box and just decided that it was time to use it. So, all you're going to need to do is get your fabric out probably iron it, I had to iron mine after I cut the strip, but get some um, paper weights or something to hold it down and just cut a big long rectangle. Now I will try to measure mine and put the measurements in the description box below if you're interested in making one exactly the same size as mine, but essentially with the width, so the from the top to the bottom, you just want it to be long enough that it covers your bra if you're planning on wearing a bra with it or just you know long enough that it will cover everything you want it to cover and then in the length you just want it to be long enough that it can wrap around your entire body and still tie up in a bow or in a knot or however you want to tie it up at the back once you've measured out and drawn with the chalk I use white chalk because it was the least noticeable you then want to just cut out your long strip, making sure that you're using fabric scissors and not just regular paper scissors. Once I'd cut it out, I just picked up my piece, took it over to the mirror and tied it around myself to check that the size was correct. And when I had confirmed that I had the right size piece, I then lay it back down on the rest of my fabric to trace it with the chalk and cut a second piece. This is just to have two layers, it will give you a little bit more coverage and I just think it looks a little bit neater and more professional when there are two layers of fabric. Now the next step is to attach the rhinestones. Now these ones that I've been using were iron on which makes it very easy to attach them. So all I did was get my ironing board out, fold my strip in half. You only need to do this with one strip because it'll just be the piece that is on the outside not the lining and then just measured out how much would cover my front, how much of the surface I wanted to cover in diamantes, and then tip the bag out. This part is what took the longest, was just getting the little pink rhinestones, flipping them over so that the flat side was against the fabric and the nice diamante side was facing up. So this took me honestly about an hour because of how many I was doing. You could just do like a strip of them, you could do a little pattern, you could spell out something, you can do whatever you want with these rhinestones. I just decided to do it like this with a big long sort of full coverage. Ideally I wanted to cover the entire surface with the diamantes but I did run out so I decided to do more of like a random um, spread like I've got here and then just time to iron them on. The hot iron the heat from that will melt the glue on the back and stick them to the fabric now making sure when I did this I just put a piece of fabric this is actually just a pillowcase like a spare old one between my iron and my fabric because otherwise the um, little gems can actually can accidentally stick to your iron so yeah I just then went and added a few little extra ones here and there once I ironed down the main um, arrangement I then just went and filled in any gaps that I noticed with my leftovers and just kept doing this and fiddling around and then ironing them back down until I was happy with the final look. 
So once I was done, this is what I had. You then want to just lift it up nice and gently and kind of give it a little bit of a wiggle or a shake because some of them will fall off. I know some of mine did, but that's okay. I just either stuck them back down and re-ironed them or just let them fall off. But once you're all done with the rhinestones, you want to go and take your other piece and lie it over the top with the rhinestones in the middle. And then take some dress pins and pin right along the edges the two pieces together. Once it was all pinned, I then just took my fabric scissors and just neatened up the edges with any little overlaps and trimmed them off. Now once everything is pinned and trimmed, I just got my sewing machine out. Now any sewing machine will work. I used my overlocker, but again, you can just use a zigzag stitch on your regular sewing machine if you don't have one. And just slowly went along the edge, taking the pins out as I was going, stitching the sides together the whole way along. Now once I was done with the stitching, you then just want to put your hand in the middle and flip it right sides out. So you'll now have a long tube that's all stitched together at the edges. And it will look something like this. The last step is just to neaten up the ends. So I just tucked my threads back in, folded it over slightly so that it was all neatened up and obviously pinned this down. Repeated it on the other end, so folding the raw edges into the middle of the tube and then pressing it flat with some pins. And I then just took my regular sewing machine, so not the overlocker this time, just my old little Janome, and straight stitch as close to the edge as I could with a pink thread. Now with my overlocker, I just used white thread because it's on the inside and you can't see it anyway, but with this, you want to make sure that you are matching the thread color to your fabric as best as you can. Trimming off any excess thread as you go. And then, you're all done. Now, I always make sure I immediately try on anything I make. So once you're done, try it on, see how you're going. Even if you want to try it on a few times throughout the process, go for it. It's... That's the best thing about making something for yourself is you have the luxury of stopping, starting whenever you want to make sure that everything fits the way you want it to. And then just have fun, give a little twirl and let the light reflect off of your diamonds. and it is that easy now we are all done like i said it literally took me like two hours no time at all and probably an hour of that was just flipping over diamantes before i could iron them all flat you really do want to make sure that they are all like ironed down for quite a while because I have had like an incident where like a few of them have fallen off when I like brush past them but it's kind of like from a distance it looks awesome anyway like super shiny and up close the fact that it's not perfect like you honestly hardly even notice it just looks a little bit more rustic and that's why I kind of at the sides brought it out a little bit just so that it wasn't so obvious but yeah that is it as always all of my social media will be linked down below if you want to go follow me over on instagram and see how i actually like style a lot of the things i almost always post photo i pretty much post photos over there every single day and i'm on my stories all the time so if you want more from me than just the three videos a week that i post up on youtube then that is the place to go but other than that if you like this video you know what to do give it a thumbs up so i'm going to do more sewing videos I always, always, always film what I'm making, but I very rarely upload them because it does take me a while to edit all of the footage because I usually have like two hours of footage rather than just like a 20 minute sit down clip of like talking about random shit. But yes, yeah, so if you do like seeing these types of videos, then give it a thumbs up so I know to do more of them. And of course, if you're not already, but you want to see more videos from me, then subscribe and hit the little notification bell so that you can get 
notified every time I post a video, which is every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday Australian Standard Time. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on Friday. Function getting blurred, need to slow down grass and the bush is sounding like it's Motown Gold.